Okay, so welcome to the iometer introduction uh, video that I'm making here. Um, we'll just be going over some basics on iometer, how to do some basic testing. Uh, it looks kind of a, like a clunky tool. Um, uh, Intel wrote this quite a while back and released it to the uh, community. And um, it is incredibly powerful and it is my go-to tool for any kind of uh, dist IO based benchmarking, testing, troubleshooting purposes and uh, it's incredibly handy. I, I probably wouldn't use anything else. There are a lot, of, a lot of other freeware tools out there that do some basic um, quick tests but they're uh, nowhere near as advanced and capable um, as uh, and uh, trustworthy as this utility seems to be in the industry. Um, uh, well let's get started here. This is your uh, basic uh, uh, managers and workers um, area. Uh, this is your system here. This is uh, your worker. Typically it's, uh, it creates a number of workers per one per core or CPU that you have. I've, I've just brought mine down to one worker for the purposes of this video. I normally only use one worker for basic testing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and test on the C drive which is my SSD. I'm going to create about a uh, it's a 20 million sectors uh, so for uh, 20 million sectors that would create about a 10 gig test uh, file and you want to, what you want to do is you want to create a file that is much larger than the amount of RAM you have in your system I have about 8 gig of RAM so a 10 gig test file is not large enough you would probably want to create like a 20 gig test file at least and that would be about 40 million uh, sectors here so uh, <clears throat> but for testing purposes and brevity we'll leave it at that you can go ahead and leave starting this sector at zero number of outstanding IOs this is a number that can can be fluid uh, depending on your testing scenario uh, for older versions of Windows 16 would be adequate you might bump it to 32 to see what you get uh, even for VMware you might try 64 because the Q depth on 64 with uh, VMware uh, may be more advantageous depending on if you're running like an NFS type mount um, so it really depends on your situation um, so just kind of be aware of that but we're going to stick with uh, 16 for the Q depth um, or the number of outstanding IOs uh, network targets we're going to save this one for another rainy day the access specification tab okay here uh, let's see get rid of that uh, we're going to go with like a basic 4k block 100% read 0% random so it's going to be 100% sequential in other words uh, and, and all reading 4k block size so this is going to be an IOPS test for the most part we're going to be kind of watching for maximum IOPS that this SSD can push out to see what happens uh, so we're going to go ahead and add that to the scenario and you can test multiple scenarios back to back so if you wanted to add in a 512 byte you could do that um, in other words you could throw them in there but we're going to keep it simple this time around to stick with the 4k all right, for the results display, we're going to set this to four. Uh, it typically is at infinity there, uh, but we're going to bump it down to four. It seems like a good four. Between two and four seems to be a good. Uh, doesn't take too much overhead from the system while it's running uh, the disk test. Um, you have, um, let's see, here's, here's your basic per parameters. Um, that's going to be showing during the run and you have if you click on it you'll see here that there's quite a few metrics that you can uh, key in on um, it's pretty interesting here um, so th there's quite a few things you can look at and uh, you could change it to um, a dial type um, display but um, we'll just leave it as it is for now this seems to be a pretty convenient readout um, all right, so we have our frequency set, and we have our default metrics being shown, and uh, this, by the way, this is the range uh, zero, and it shows you the end range here being 60,000, and uh, this will uh, auto adjust as it needs to, so you can keep an eye on the ranges. Um, if this bumped over 100, you'd see the the uh, range shift over here. All right, we'll go over to our test setup tab. And you can call this whatever you want. We're test, I'm testing my SSD, so I've titled it as such. Uh, we're going to set this to a for the runtime. We're going to set this to just a quick runtime. We're going to set it to a 20 seconds here. 
Um, ramp up time, you want to set a ramp up time that's going to give a disc a little bit of chance to uh, warm up, spin up, whatever the case may be. So 10 seconds seems to be a good time for that. For record results, uh, this typically defaults to all. We want to set this to none just for quick test run purposes. If you do have it record results uh, for one reason or another, it just creates like a nice CSV or an Excel spreadsheet that can kind of uh, let you key in on different metrics and something for um, if you're benchmarking a series of different disks or you're running different tests, it's, it's kind of nice to you know keep a set of CSVs for um, long-term result purposes or you can graph it and do whatever with that. The rest of the faults you can leave as is, the disk, the network, uh, and the cycling options set to normal. That's uh, just fine the way that is. Alright, so we're going to go back to our results display for our startup. Um, just go over make sure we have everything set here. Doing C drive, 10 gig uh, test file, 16 Q depth. Nothing with the uh, network targets for our access spec. We're doing a 4K block size, 100% uh, read, 100% sequ uh, sequential, or zero random. Uh, all right, looks good. So we'll go ahead and uh, kick this off by selecting the green flag. Notice our ramp up time of 10 seconds right here run one of one that's referring to our scenario there's only one scenario and it's running that scenario now so it's going to count down four seconds here and you'll see the result update and there it is we're getting a little, little over 20,000 IOPS there which is fantastic for a home PC normally you'd see that on a, a lower end NetApp type SAN or a, uh, um, a rated device um, depending on what kind of drives you have in the system uh, 80 megabytes of bandwidth, that's typical with the 4K block size with those uh, resulting IOPS. Uh, 0.7 millisecond average response time, that's pretty sweet. Typically if you look at a hard drive you'll see a, a good one back in the older days, maybe 0 0.7, 0 0.9 millisecond access time. So that is nice, that's a result of the SSD technology there. And then your maximum is the uh, other end of that scale. 33% utilization uh, for the CPU, that would sound high but the reason is we're running a really high number of uh, IOPS and it's going to take a little bit extra to process that and you may have a higher CPU utilization if you have a slower CPU but it's just going to take more to, to keep up with that SSD or those higher IOPS so that's a, the reasoning behind that and uh, with that this concludes our uh, uh, initial introduction to Ometer uh, and how to run a basic test on your system and there will be additional uh, uh, videos in this series. I'm not sure how far I'm going to take it yet, but um, I hope you en enjoyed the video and uh, look for more uh, in the future.